Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart and in this lesson we're going over Science Book 3, Lesson 12, Changing Matter. Now before we talked about matter, what matter is, but now we want to talk about how matter changes. And in this unit we will discover how matter can change and what are the common forms of matter. So interesting lesson, let's begin. Okay, we always begin with a vocabulary section. So let's learn some new words or maybe go over words you already know that will be used in the lesson and in the reading section. The first word is stir. To stir means to mix liquids or solids together. You probably stir many times in your life already. Sometimes your drink, let's say you have a drink and it's tea and the tea, you taste it, ooh, it's too bitter. So you want to change the taste. You might take some sugar, put the sugar in the tea. Don't put too much sugar in the tea. That's what my wife always tells me. Anyway, put some sugar in the tea and then use a spoon and you stir it. Because if you don't stir it, the sugar just goes to the bottom of the tea and stays there. You don't want that. You want the sugar to mix with the liquid so that everything is sweet, not just the bottom part. So you stir the sugar and what happens? The sugar will mix with the liquid. So the sugar is a solid and the tea is a liquid. And I should say at this point that we have liquids, we have solids. Those are two forms of matter. What's the third form of matter? We have liquid, solid, and gas. So matter can have three different forms. It can be a gas, it can be a liquid, or it can be a solid. And the difference between them is the temperature. The, usually, a ma if a matter is solid, that's the coolest temperature. Then it gets warmer, it becomes a liquid. Then it gets even warmer, it may become a gas. Sometimes. not it, You have to have very extreme temperatures for some things. Okay, stir. But stir, you know, I went off on stir. Stir is when you're mixing liquids and solids so that they become a liquid. They're all liquid. The solid dissolves. We'll talk about that. Anyway, we do have a video for stir, and this is a good uh, picture or video for stirring. You can see this is probably in a factory, and they're mixing something. What are they mixing? It could be, I'm not really sure what, what they're mixing there. It reminds me, though, my brother-in-law works for a beer factory, and they probably have many of these types of machines to mix the different ingredients to make the beer, but it will just stir it and it's on machine because nobody wants to sit there with a hand and do this for an hour, right? But a machine, a stirrer, will do it for you. So to stir uh, things together. Next we have dissolve, and I mentioned this already. <clears throat> That's when you mix a solid into a liquid. For example, the sugar is a solid, you stir it in the tea, the liquid, and the result is that the solid disappears, right? That sugar disappears. What happened to it? It's still there, but it dissolved. It dissolved into the tea. So the solid became part of the liquid. Okay, and that's that some things will do that. Not everything, of course, but some things will do that. A physical change. A physical change is a change in matter where no new matter is made. And so what's an example of that? Of course, we just went over that. Again, when you mix sugar into tea or you mix salt into water, no new matter. You're not making any new type of matter or new type of substance. The original things, the original matter is still there. The sugar is in your tea. You just can't see it, but you can taste it. There's no new matter made, it's, but it's been changed from a solid into a liquid. And the tea has changed too because it's now um, part, uh, you know, it's got the sugar in it. So it's a physical change, okay? A change in matter where no new matter is made. Evaporate. Evaporate is another type of a physical change because let's say we have that tea, right? We have the sugar. Now let's say we heat up the tea so we want to change the liquid to a gas, right? We just talked about that. As temperatures 
get hotter, liquids will turn into a gas. So if you boil the tea, right, the, the tea, the water in the tea will evaporate. It will come into the air and disappear. And at the bottom, you have the sugar crystals at the bottom. Sugar's still there. Right? So there was no change in the matter. No new matter was made. It's all still there. It's just a physical change. So dissolve and evaporate are both physical changes. They're uh, different types of physical changes. So, but evaporate is when a liquid goes from being a liquid to a gas, and you see it every day when your mom or your dad boils water on the stove to make pasta or to make uh, noodles, ramen. Uh, you boil water and the water, you see the steam above the water. That means the water is changing into a gas. The water is evaporating. Don't boil the water too long because all the water will evaporate, right? And you'll have a problem. <laughs> Whatever you're cooking will burn. <laughs> you don't want that. So be careful. Uh, but when you do that, okay. Next we have rust. Now rust is a different kind of change. Rust means when a metal changes into new red or brown matter. New matter is created, so it's not a physical change. It's a different kind of change. We'll talk about that. Um, but when a metal is left out, so imagine you have some metal parts. If you have a metal toy and you leave it outside and it rains and it's outside for a couple months, you, you like, where's my toy? And you go out, you look at it and your metal toy is now changed into red or brown color. And maybe some stuff powder comes off of it and it's not as good or as shiny as it used to be. That means that it has rusted. Okay. So be careful with your metal things that you have a bicycle, uh, a toy. Don't leave it outside in the rain because especially water and wind, air will make that metal rust. Okay. Some types of metal do not rust. Stainless steel doesn't rust. Okay. But other, many other types of metal will rust. Now rust, as I said, is not a physical change. It is a chemical change. A chemical change is a change in matter where new matter, new matter is made. So I just gave the example of the metal, right? The metal changes into, it changes color, red or brown, and it's a new powder, right? This, it, it's, that's not metal, that's a new matter. Another good example is in the picture here, right? If you have a match, right? This is a certain type of matter. But if you light the match, and there's a flame, right? I'm not a very good artist. A yeah, flame, that's maybe better. What happens? It turns black and the wood changes form. Now, this isn't wood. This is ash. It's carbon, right? The chemical property of the wood and this part here, the match head, uh, changes into new matter. That is what we call a chemical change. Chemical change where new matter is made. Okay, so we saw two different types of uh, changes in matter. Okay, those are our words for today. Now let's go over the two main ideas for this lesson. And we already kind of touched upon these in the vocabulary section. We talked about physical change and we talked about chemical change. Remember, in a physical change, no new matter is made. So what kinds of physical changes are there? Well, of course, there's cutting, right? When you cut paper, or you cut colored paper to make some interesting designs or some artwork, you're cutting the paper. You're changing the, the shape or the physical properties of the paper, but you're not making any new material. It's still paper, right? But it's just changed in its form or its size. So cutting is a type of physical change. So is folding, right? You have a flat sheet of paper and you fold it. And some people can fold and make very interesting shapes with the paper. But no new paper is made. Nothing new is being made. You're just changing the existing paper. And again, the same thing for tearing. Tearing is like cutting, but tearing is not as neat or as precise or as controlled as cutting. 
Cutting is very controlled and you can control the, the cut very easily. But when you tear something, you don't really control it. The tear goes anywhere. So that's the difference between cut and tear. Tear is just you rip paper apart and it just tears off. So again, in these types of uh, methods for changing matter, no new material is made. However, on the bottom for chemical change, new matter is made. We gave the example of the match. It burns. So what the paper changes, the paper changes into black substance here. We call that carbon. It's also ash and smoke. Smoke is a gas, right? The, the smoke of the fire is the paper changing because of the heat. That is a chemical change. Again, heat, like I said before, heat will change the, the, the matter into something new. And they, it looks like an example here, the eggs. They're still eggs, but the physical properties of the eggs, they will change. Um, and you might get some new um, matter when you cook eggs, especially if you cook eggs too long, they'll turn black and be burnt. So be careful when you heat foods. And of course, we saw the example before when we were looking at the vocabulary. What does rust mean? Rust is when metal is left outside, exposed to rain, usually rain, humid water, moisture, and air, oxygen. Uh, it, the, um, the metal will rust. It will change like this, and it will make this brown or red material and if you touch it it's like a powder and it falls off the metal if you leave metal out long enough the nails or whatever this is they will rust away the metal will disappear it will completely change and that's not good obviously you don't want that to happen okay so those are two ways of changing matter now as i said before matter can have three main forms and we talked about those first we have solid then as the temperature increases, it becomes a liquid. And then the temperature keeps going up, it becomes a gas. So these are our three main types of matter, or three main states of matter. Changes of state will occur. And we talked about some of these already. So freezing. Again, like I said, as the temperature goes up, this is temperature. Temperature. As the temperature goes up, Solids turn into liquids, liquids turn into gas. But it also happens the other way as the temperature goes down. So if we have a liquid, it changes into a solid. That's what we call freezing. So of course, the common example is water. Water is normally a liquid. If you have water at room temperature in your, uh, in your bedroom or in your kitchen or in your living room, in your house, you have water that's not in the freezer, right? That's just water. You drink it. It's a liquid. But if you put it in the freezer, you lower the temperature, what happens to the water? It becomes a solid. It freezes and it changes from a liquid to a solid. In this case, it changes to ice, okay? Ice. Now, if the temperature increases, that solid ice will change into a liquid, and we call that process melting. So, of course, if you have ice on a hot summer day, and you drink all the water, and it's just ice left in the cup, you put it on your desk, and it's a hot day, that, that ice will slowly melt into liquid. We call that melting. Same thing will happen to an ice cream cone. So if you're eating ice cream, Eat it quick, not too quickly, but eat it quickly enough so it doesn't melt all over your hand, right? Okay, so melting. To change from a solid to a liquid. Now, evaporating, we already talked about that. That is when a liquid turns into a gas. And we saw the example with the water on the stove. If you heat up the water to boil something, you want to make pasta, noodles, whatever, um, the water will start to bubble, right? Because the heat makes it, there's a lot of energy in the water and it starts to bubble. And what's going on is that liquid is forming into gas and the gas is escaping into the air. It's still water. It's just moisture in the air instead of liquid in your pot. So to change from a liquid to a gas and go into the air, it kind of, you know, it's hot. It kind of merges with the air. It gets in the air and it becomes part of the air. Of course, there's a lot of water in the air right now. There's some very small particles of moisture floating around right now. And they go up in the sky. It becomes cold. They turn into liquid. What happens? It falls as rain or snow.
depending on the uh, on the temperature. Now, condensing is an interesting word or an interesting changes of state. That means it changes from a gas to a liquid. Remember, a gas is very hot, but when a gas becomes cool, it turns into a liquid. So again, think about your cup of ice water, right? You put it on your desk. Now, you may notice that after a few minutes, water will form on the outside of the cup. How did water get from inside the cup to outside the cup? That didn't happen. Remember I just said there's water in the air around you. Especially on a humid day, there's, there's more water. Now, if, if that gas, the air, comes into contact with a cold surface, what happens? Well, the water in the air cools down. It changes from a gas to a liquid. And those are the drops of water you find on the outside of your cup. Right? It also happens on the outside of your car, right? In the morning, right, it gets very cold. That air, the, the moisture in the air will collect on your car. Your dad will go out and say, what, did it rain last night? It didn't rain. It was just the dew. We call that dew in the morning that gets on your car. And that's the, it comes out of the air and it cools down and it drops onto your car on the ground. It's also on the grass. It's all over the place. We call that dew. And that's because of Condensing or condensation. Condensation is the noun. Condensation. Condensation, I-O-N, it's a noun. So that is condensation. When gas cools down and forms a liquid, that's condensation. So it's the condensing. Okay, those are some important ideas. We'll take a look at those ideas in the reading passage. Okay, here we have the reading passage. As usual, uh, you can read along with me or read along silently in your mind. Let's focus on the pronunciation and on the words we just learned. Are you ready? Let's begin. Matter can change. If you cut paper into pieces, it looks different. But each piece of paper is still paper. This is a physical change. A physical change means the matter has changed from what it looked like, but it is still the same matter. Matter, sorry. If you stir salt into water, the salt will dissolve. You cannot see it anymore. Salt dissolving in water is a physical change. The salt is still there, but now it's a liquid, it's mixed with the water, you can't see it. Okay. When all the water evaporates, the salt will be all that is left. You can separate salt from water this way. If you burn paper, smoke and ash are made. Smoke and ash are not paper. This is a chemical change. A chemical change means new matter is made. The metal iron can rust. Rusting is a chemical change. Parts of iron, very small parts, parts of iron change into new matter, which is not iron. Okay, that's the reading passage. Now let's talk about how the reading or the information, the reading passage was organized. What is the reading skill here? We have classify. We classify is to separate into different groups. And in this passage, we talked about two different groups of how matter can change, right? We talked about physical change and we talked about chemical change, okay? So first we have physical change. In physical change, matter has changed and looks different, but it is still the same matter. This is called beep, okay? What is the beep? This is called a physical change. Kind of interesting, physical change. Phys oh, yeah, oh, oh my gosh, it's over here. <laughs> physical change, P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L change. 
So it's kind of odd that, you know, it's the same thing, really. It is still the same matter. This is called a physical change. Salt can do what? What do we talk about? We talked about different types of changing or different ways, methods for changing. Salt can dissolve in water. Dissolve. Dissolve. Salt can dissolve in water. And what else? What's the opposite of dissolve? Water can what? Evaporate. Evaporate. So what we have here in our reading skill is we have one type of change. That's a classify. We say one type of change is physical change. And then we have details of physical change, right? First we have, we say, we define what is physical change. And then we give one detail. Dissolve is a type of physical change. And evaporate is a type of physical change. So we have uh, the group. What is it? And what are two details? That's how this information is organized. It's a good way to organize information in a reading passage. And the same thing happens for chemical change. So first we have chemical change, right? New matter is made. This is called a chemical change. So first we define what it is. It's a chemical change. Whoops. This pen. Yeah, okay. There we go. So new matter is made. This is called a chemical change. So first we define it. New matter is made. That is what we call a chemical change. Now what's a type of chemical change? The metal iron can, remember when the metal iron changes into a red or brown material? We call that rust. And new matter is made. Okay? So this is a good way to organize your information in a reading passage. You know, you might classify it. You know, this group, this group. Define what is this group and then give examples. Then define what is the other group and then give examples. That's a very good way to organize your information in a reading passage. Okay, well, this, in, uh, this lesson was kind of interesting. We saw how matter changes. Remember, matter can have three forms. Gas, liquid or solid. And those forms change depending on the temperature. And we, we have different words for the types of changes that occur. For example, dissolve, evaporate, condense. So matter is actually always changing form around us, right? Water is changing into a gas and then it changes back to a liquid. It rains on us. Or it may change into a solid and come down as snow or ice. Hopefully it doesn't come down as ice. That's hail. But it can happen. So matter is always changing around us depending on the temperature and also depending on what processes or what uh, what's happened, what, what kind of forces are being put onto the matter. So that's very interesting to think about. Nothing is permanent. Everything changes. But hopefully things are permanent long enough so that you can enjoy them. <laughs> okay. So anyway, there's an interesting lesson today. I hope you learned a lot, some new vocabulary, some new ideas, some new ways of looking at the world around you. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.